Hey, man. Howdy. Hi, I'm the guy from yesterday. Yeah, hey, what's up? <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the, the drunk guy. <laughs> no, I remember. No, no, no. You don't need to uh, fucking introduce yourself. No, no, no. no I'm, I'm just nervous. No need to But be. yeah. Can yeah, I, uh, can that... I uh, um, uh, a, sm a small tip for uh, audio quality improvement? Uh, don't breathe yeah. directly into your microphone. Talk adjacent okay, I, to it. Okay, I, I move it farther away from my mouth because it's on my headset. All right, you sound yeah. much better. Thank you. Thank then... you, friend. Hit me up. <laughs> okay, so so basically yesterday I got into the first time when I actually met like a reactionary, a reactionary like alt right guy, bad mm -hmm. faith actor mm -hmm. in a debate, and it was on on just text. And I watched your video. I actually rewatched it this morning, so I have my questions ready and uh, the problem is with these people i feel like is that when someone's like openly racist and such you can easily destroy them because you don't give them any like moral consideration and you just attack them with facts facts and logic destroy you know <laughs> like the meme goes yeah but but this guy I was basically memeing on in a game about everyone was doing their standard gamer bro stuff. And I started doing some woke leftist memes and this guy whispers me. And first I thought he's actually interested in, in what I'm saying. So I started to explain to him some basic like theory of labor value, how wages are, how profit is stolen wages and such. Mm -hmm. And I was in a conversation with him for like 15 minutes. And at that point, I realized I'm already in his fucking dialogue tree. His his alt right dialogue tree. But at this point, I already yeah, showed yeah. him. But at this point, I already showed him like moral consideration. Like I considered him a human being, someone that that has like empathy and stuff. So at this, I I didn't know what to do. I was like just when he hit me up with the race realist stuff, I'm like, fuck it, I'm out of here. Right. So. That's what's hard about uh, debating uh, alt-right people is their their tactics are so much more dishonest than ours. It's it's, it's really hard to actually get them. Yeah, it fucking because... so, it's fucking infuriate. Okay, like j like just so you know, I have been uh, I've always been a big like internet argument boy. I I'm always a big fan of that shit. Um, I have still not gotten over how infuriating arguing with dishonest reactionaries is. Like that n that never goes away. I am um I like I have probably like shit talked <sighs> at least triple digits like people who are blatant reactionaries white nationalists and stuff I never I never stops like actually angering me to my core so that'll that that part never goes away that fun part of the debate never um never actually leaves just so you know okay uh what but... kind of... oh sorry yeah, go ahead. I, it cut me off any time. I'm prone to rambling. No, I mean, me too, buddy. Um, what <laughs> so, so, all right. Um, first of all, the most important thing that you have to keep in mind when debating reactionaries mm. is that there is never, ever, ever a guarantee of a happy ending. Um, you can work well to an audience and you can perform in a way which you believe best represents your values, but there is very rarely an outcome which leads directly to reconciliation, the changing of a mind, anything like that. Very often you're going to leave frustrated. And that's, keep in mind, part of their goal, their obstinacy, their obtuseness. It's not just a way of insulating them against other ideas. It is a way of frustrating, belittling, and demoralizing their opponents. It's deliberate. It's designed. It is a rhetorical strategy. Like arguing with a child. In the same way that a child can ask, why? Why? Over and over and over again. It's like, a, it's like that whitest kids you know sketch, you know, they can, or the, the Louis C.K. sketch. They can ask over and over and over again. And even though there's no meaning, no essence, no intelligence behind their query, the, the relentlessness, the obstinacy with which they present their questions, or in a reactionary's case, their racist fact sheets, um, is in itself a tactic to frustrate, to discombobulate. Um, so set aside the idea of a happy ending at any moment. Um, you are very much playing to an audience. 
um, uh, 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 for the potential, not the guarantee of gain. Was there was there an audience? Were people like listening in? No, no. This this was just a private conversation. So and that that that's that's like part of the problem. I feel like because I think we have to be open to people so that we can convince them. But when someone comes in, you know, pretending to be interested, but he's actually just there to to get a gotcha on you, to to dunk on you. It's really hard because if I if he's openly racist, I can go with I can attack them easily but when they pretend to be like a normal person and then then they go, they transition to their talking points but at that point i'm already like invested in the conversation it's really hard to just you know transition to to attacking them yeah no i get it it's that's why you hide your power level right i do the exact same thing when i'm arguing leftist talking points with people i oh i never like okay if I'm on like Reddit or something or fucking YouTube or whatever, my uh, my power level has already been revealed. I can't pretend I'm not a leftist. That that gate is closed to me. But if I'm talking with someone new out in the wild, if I'm out in person speaking with someone, I always come at people with those soak dem points first because I know that if I open up with the hardcore fucking gulag, well, I don't believe in gulags, <laughs> but the hardcore fucking you know eat the rich, bomb the police buildings. What like about the shit. Yeah, yeah. If I open up with that shit. <laughs> Um, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm much less likely to obtain, to, to, to win, to, to get what I but want. That's like so hard because like, I'm kind of an ide idealist. Like, I feel like you have to be somewhat to believe in these things. So I, I really want people to have like human decency and kindness for their fellow humans. And these people only want to win arguments. <laughs> But but to get to the middle ground, I feel I like I have to to show that kindness. Yeah, I this is this is why so many people um, talk about like like fascists aren't humans. You know, uh, uh, um, you know they've revoked their right to human consideration. I don't actually believe these things. I'm a sociology major. Part of my major was learning to accept the shared humanity that all people possess, um, no matter hor how horrible the things they do are. Uh, I think that we have to treat them terribly in spite of, but with a recognition of their human element. Um, keep in mind this, I, 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 I think. When you're arguing with somebody who's been hiding their power level and then they bust it out and, oh shit, they believe black people have a lower IQ. Like, in a, Well, black people do on average have a lower IQ, but they don't think it's because of socioeconomic factors. They think it's because black people fucking skull shape and brain size and black people were doing a favor by being brought over to America to be enslaved and fucking uh, the Jews. And when they bust that shit out, you have to take a second. Cause this is what I always do. You take a second and you think in spite of everything that has been accomplished thus far in this conversation, this person is a monster. They believe monstrous things. And if they got what they wanted, I would be dead or deported hurting their feelings is the least they deserve it take it takes a, a bit of a hard heart but it takes like there's a fundamental recognition you have to make the necessity of of antagonism towards these people you know to to switch to, like, on a dime yeah flip the switch and and go 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 for the truth yeah, and it's really hard, and it never stops being hard. There's never, like, a magic bullet solution that'll make you comfortable with being kind of shitty towards people who are themselves shitty, you know? Um, especially because so much of progressive rhetoric, and I apologize if I'm rambling here, um, but so much of progressive rhetoric concerning, um, like, say, prison structuring or the reform of, say, murderers or rapists or other people who are conventionally bad involves the acceptance, recognition, and playing up of that person's humanity. You know, we are all human beings. It could have happened to any of us. It is necessary that we sympathize with these ails so that we may best correct them. But then you get a fascist, and a fascist is kind of the same in the sense that they're also a human being and in, in the sense that they have been radicalized by political messaging that we are ourselves capable of being subjected to. But you can't let your empathy 
cloud your willingness to dunk on those fools, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the, the thing is that makes it kind of even harder is like maybe a year ago or a little more ago, I was like the typical reactionary gamer bro, bro hey, thinking that yeah, SJWs and stuff are ruining games and stuff. Gamers rise up. But then, <laughs> yep. Uh, another question for you, if you have the time, is I I live in Hungary, which is like really racist and bigoted and everything. And like, if Trump's like a, a semi fascist, then our prime minister is like a real full fascist. Yes, I so... am. I am fairly <laughs> familiar with the um, let's say moral failings of your current political leadership. Yeah, and I have friends that actually like have like real empathy and like I feel the goodness in them, but because of their upbringing and because they are not so willing to look at st stuff like like you and Destiny and Hassan and stuff, they are, they still believe these things. How do you uproot someone like that without being like too aggressive? Because Sometimes I go out drinking with them, and I'm like, "Yeah, that's because of capitalism, 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 capitalism." But at that point, they ju it just sounds like a meme, like you know, like, like it's really hard to actually get it in their brain that that this is a real problem. No, I, I completely know what you mean. I, I had that frustration a couple of years back. I was well, I was out with my friends, and um, and I did and the same shit. Like I was like, yeah, fucking capitalism. They were like, haha, yeah, man, you got it. And then I then I, I looked at them, and they didn't like care what I had just said. And I realized these fuckers think I'm memeing. These yeah. pieces of shit think I'm fucking joking. They don't think they think I'm just playing up a character. I had to really rebrand my messaging after that when, when I realized I wasn't getting taken seriously. Um, what what kind of stuff do you think that your friends besides capitalism, which which is a tough meme to blue pill people on, um, what what stuff do you think your friends have a hard heart on? Um, do do they have like like problems with like race or gender issues, or is it just like a capitalism thing? It's kind of hard to tell because like you know between friends we meme about everything. I'm I'm fully for like edgy humor between friends, yeah. you know, but but openly. Not so much anymore, but so it's it's hard to read if they really believe that stuff. But when I push them, it seems like they they don't actually believe that. At least like the one I'm closest with, who's like a really close friend of mine for like over 15 years, he's just like a hardline. Uh, uh, what the fuck is it called? Sorry, I, uh, the right version of like a libertarian, yeah. He's like a real hardline libertarian. And I try to explain to him why that shit doesn't work. But he, he still believes it because, and it's really weird because he's like someone that basically lived off of his parents for his whole, whole life. He never really worked hard or anything, but he still doesn't understand yeah. that. That's the libertarian that, archetype, like, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and I don't know. So. Even when I believed in like racist and bigoted and like anti-woman stuff, I used to be an anarchist just with those thoughts. But he he never transitioned from the libertarian thinking to, and it's part partially because of our political system also because like they're supposed to be right wing, but they f do fully like communist stuff like getting everything under the government's control and they like fully exploit everything so it's <laughs> right i mean that that's often a pretense by which authoritarian regimes will nationalize industry they'll claim they're doing it at some sort of communist you know like populist um agenda but in reality they're just exploiting the um the sympathy of the workers to obtain like greater you know state control of industry um unfortunately a fairly common playbook it's the reason why leftist rhetoric gets appropriated so much you know um like you know national socialist party from the nazis um yeah i shit. know the memes <laughs> yeah 
Um, all right, well, well, at any rate, um, in terms of libertarianism, I feel libertarians are generally speaking very frustrating to argue against um, because not only are they kind of a stone throw away from being left and right leaning simultaneously, like they're, they're, they're really close to both of them. They could go either way, but yeah, also... that, that's, Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, so sorry. I just wanted to say that that's one of the things that frustrates me about the idea of having a political scale that just like left, right is because libertarian doesn't really fit on that because it's somewhere in between it's close to both sides, but not really either. It, yeah, and it, re it really depends on which aspects of it they're more interested in, right? If a, li if a libertarian is genuinely about, like, deconstructing hierarchy, um, fuck state control of industry, we don't want people to be slaves, da 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 If that's really what they're about, then I feel like they're just a couple arguments away from leftism. Like, they're really, like, they're yeah, right there. that's what I feel, and I just don't know how to make him slide over, you know? Yeah. I mean, after all, um, libertarianism was originally coined as a leftist ideology. It was, if I recall correctly, the Americans, much in the same way that they have perverted the term liberal to refer to left-leaning people in the political spectrum, rather than what it actually means, which is people who believe in liberalism, which is to say most people. Um, uh, uh, libertarian was originally a leftist philosophy. It was a... Um, I mean, left libertarianism is how we refer to it now, but that used to be sort of the, the given uh, interpretation of the word. I'm sorry, I'm rambling a little bit. In terms, yeah, of, go ahead. In terms of arguing with a libertarian, hmm. so, you, so you feel, do you think that your friend is using libertarianism as a dog whistle to promote, um, like, corporatist rule or do you think no, they... no 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 he's he's very he, it's really hard because i think he understands that corporations uh, exploit workers and stuff i i drilled that into his head but he still believes for some reason this idea that if the common man can rise up and be rich and and that for some reason leftist ideology ruins that concept you know uh, that that if someone's like really talented and um, and can make some business and like rise up that's a really good thing and i'm like i don't understand why he believes that's so important um i think i kind of understand um if i may segue for a little bit many yeah, people ahead. there's a term in america are you familiar with it called the temporarily embarrassed millionaire mm, not really the idea is that many people in a capitalist system who are themselves economically disadvantaged or at the very least middle class, they're not rich, I mean to say, they view themselves as one of a class which will eventually become wealthy. They are temporarily oh, yeah. embarrassed millionaires. I, I, I know what you mean. Gotcha. Um, and I believe the reason for this phenomena, and many of these people turn out to be libertarians, those that are a little bit more politically woke, the reason they subscribe to this, um, this, this value system, um, is because many people believe that through some contrivance, through some circumstance, through, through some exertion of their talent, they could become exceptional. I am personally on the cusp of this. I think there's a possibility that uh, with a little bit of elbow grease and effort, I might be able to become an online political figure. That feels really good. Um, and a lot of people think that, that if they could just if they could just reach that, that threshold, if they could push past that boundary, they could live a life free of free of the, the petty concerns that have marked it up until this point. Many people believe capitalism is the only system which ensures this a possibility. Um, for example, and I don't mean to get too rambly, but no one wants no one wants to admit how their life is probably going to turn out under capitalism. Um, that they're going to spend the rest of their life worried about bills, that they're going to spend the rest of their life struggling to find a way to pay for the things they've been told are necessities, that they're going to spend the rest of their life desperately hoping they don't get laid off at their job when things seem to constantly peep, then margins keep getting narrower and narrower. People don't want to be honest about the future that lies in front of them. So they think, yes, at least I live in a system 
where someday my exceptional talent will be recognized and I will be rewarded for that talent with money, with frame, with social recognition. And I can use that to break free of this cycle. A lot of people think socialism doesn't allow these opportunities, that socialism mandates this, this dull, gray continuity for everyone. When I speak to libertarians, when I speak to liberals, when I speak to capitalists who chide socialism and communism, who chide worker-centric ideological movements, they seem to do so, in my experience, because they are deeply uncomfortable with the idea in living in a system which they falsely believe mandates their mediocrity rather than this system which permits them an avenue by which they might one day succeed does that make any sense yep definitely like the guy i spoke to yesterday when i explained to him the liberty theory of value that was his first point but bringing up the fact but what if i want to work even better and get even more stuff and i'm like sure you can do that but if everyone gets the opportunity to work a little and distribute resources equally, then no one starts to that. You can still get your sports car and your nice house. Maybe, honestly, I'm even, <laughs> I'm maybe a bit more extremist than that, but sure, let's say he can do that. But for some reason there, they don't even want to consider the fact that, I mean, my friend, he's, he's open to it, so I, I can work on him, but... The, but like real reactionary, alt-right people are, yeah, they, they just want to win. Yeah, I mean, again, you, you, can't, you can't enter those debates or leave those debates with an expectation of victory. Um, because it will, dri- it will drive you fucking insane. There's, there's, no, there's no guarantee. The best rhetorician in the world. I mean, you could, you could fucking tag team like Sam Cedar, Noam Chomsky... And, uh, and fucking Stephen Benelli the second together into some mutant abomination. And you could slap them down in front of a podium and get them to try and bread pill an audience of reactionaries. And there's not a guarantee a single one of them would walk out of there with their minds changed. It's just not a realistic expectation. But what you can do is you can give them some points to think about and hope that that will lean them leftward far enough that they'll be more permissive towards more radical changes in the future. For example with libertarianism. The two points I like to focus on are that in A, there is not a single system advocated for by the modern American or even global left, which does not permit the exceptional individual to succeed. Now, could you become a hyper billionaire and rule the world and straddle the fucking government with your gigantic money filled balls? No, probably not. And neither could you in this system either dumbass you're not going to become a billionaire but do you want to have a nice house do you want to live free of financial worry do you want to be socially recognized for your success do you want to live a life of ambition to constantly improve upon previous projects great you can do that under socialism my friend I think it's very important to hit this point home. And the second point which must be hit home, and I feel like this one is even more important to the socially conscientious libertarian, is that you have to play this like a numbers game. It's all well and good to say that capitalism permits someone to be exceptional, that it rewards individuality and talent and hard work and blah, 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 blah. How many people under capitalism get that fantasy? And how many people under capitalism die at 73 from a preventable illness after spending their entire life working two jobs to just barely meet rent, food, and children college costs. If we're talking about a numbers game, the number of people under capitalism who get to live the fantasy of capitalism is vastly less than the number of people who will get to live the reality of socialism under socialism. You know? Yeah. So those are those are my two. I'm sorry. I know I'm being super rambly, but those no, are cool. those are my two big memes for libertarians because it deals with their it deals primarily with their fear of inadequacy, which is a big one, and with their um, uh, um, uh, uh, with their concern that um, 
that alternative means of economic organization might not permit people to succeed in like an, an exceptional manner. Um, so yeah, that, that is how I would handle that personally. Yeah. The, what I wanted to say is, uh, the kind of hard thing is that libertarians are also somewhat idealistic. They believe in a society that in ideal can, could be achieved. And also like leftist so, uh, rhetoric is also similar. So I kind of feel a kinship. It's just that, that, uh, consideration for your fellow human beings is that what's missing. This is what's the difference. So. That, that, that's what I have to like drill into them. I think that many libertarians, though not all of them, will be brought about. Many of them have the potential to be brought about. And that in and of itself is worthwhile. Um, for your friend, for the people you care about, I think the best you can ever really do is just give them a few points to chew on, um, leave them alone, and um, try to calmly argue against their um their I, I don't know their their fantastical faith in the capacity of capitalism to ensure the happiness of the common man and for people that you aren't planning on being friends with at the end of the day um toss aside all hopes of um <laughs> of a, a calm and reasoned argument with a shared respect for one another's humanity and do everything you can to fucking humiliate them I think that's really yeah, the definitely. best thing to be done. Definitely. Boy, drawing sure takes a while. <laughs> well, this isn't really like, drawing, I suppose. What, what, one of his uh, main talking points coming up for uh, libertarianism is in Hungary, for example, we used to have privatized healthcare, mm -hmm. and it worked decently. It worked okay. And then uh, healthcare fully became like uh, government controlled, single player, single payer. And it's actually like really shit, like people die in hospitals all the time. And single payer healthcare is supposed to be the best. And with a decent government, it should be. But when we have a authoritarian regime that's just exploiting and stealing all the insurance money and stuff, like they stole. 20 years of insurance money for self-interest and everyone's like, yeah, it happens, man. It's like, yeah, we had to pay off debts to the European Union, whatever. They, they did everything they could. It's really hard to convince people that single payer healthcare is actually the best, best solution when things went to shit. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, isn't that like a common strategy with, um, with, uh, uh, right-leaning governments it's the co-opting and then the um destabilization of pre-existing industries to um to to make them less popular amongst the masses i feel like that's a super common tactic um it also really fucking sucks uh stay safe out there okay okay thanks um have a good oh yeah. we're, uh, before ahead. before you head out were there any other memes that you'd like to bring up uh, do you have any anime, anime memes? I'm a huge beep. <laughs> oh shit! Wait, uh, what's your favorite anime? Uh, FSCL. Are you fucking? FSCL. Are you fucking kidding FSCL, me? FSCL, then Ping Pong, then Totomi Galaxy. What the fuck? You have the best taste. Of course, I I try to explain everything everyone on Fortune that I have the best taste, but they all have shit taste. <laughs> I, I feel like you're memeing on me. Have you like? I'm literally not. No, no, no. Like you're like, haha. I, 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 do, 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 do. I watched your first video when you came on to like uh, speak with Hassan and uh, uh, the other guy, and you started talking about, about anime, and I was like, fuck yeah, finally someone understands good taste. <laughs> what a fucking hero! All right, you're you're officially invited back on in the future. Jesus Christ. Fucking fully coolie ping pong to Tommy. You're br you're bringing it out for me. You whipped it right. I was ready to fucking sword fight with you, and you pulled out your fucking 14 inch hog, dripping, and slammed it right on the table in front of me. That big anime hog. Oh god. Yeah. Thanks, man. No. Uh, thank you. I enjoyed the conversation very much. Thanks. That was a good one. I I stayed in the stick room. I'll talk Bye. to you soon. Okay.
Thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh, that went well.